What's up everyone, this is FP Sticks, and in today's video, I'm gonna be bringing you something a little bit different. Uh, no Go Battle League today. Today's video is actually going to be featuring my week one performance in Arrow's Draft League. So if you don't know who Arrow is, he's one of the top battlers in the world and also a content creator on Twitch. And I believe he started doing some YouTube stuff as well, but um, mostly on Twitch where he live streams and um, does his battles there. But he uh, hosts this draft league, which essentially pokey draft. Um, you get a bunch of people together and then you follow a draft format for selecting your team of six Pokemon. And so this is a show six pick three format where you pick a team of six and then um, you're able to see your opponent's team of six as well. And from there, you can kind of decide what team of three you want to bring in. The format of this, um, you're going to play three battles with each opponent. And then um, obviously it's, it's a best of three there, but you do play all three matches. So in today's video, you're going to see my week one performance. Um, and everyone who's in this draft league, Eros Draft League, um, is definitely one of the best battlers in the world. The competition is very steep and a lot of them are also content creators So feel free to give them a check out as well So I hope you guys will enjoy this content here something a little bit different, but definitely intense battles to come So for my team of six, I have drafted Galarian Stunfisk um, Galvantula, Cresselia, Vigoroth, Driftblim, and Ludicolo. And my first opponent uh, in this week is Arrow. He drafted Dugong, Metacham, Registeel, Whiskash, Meganium, and Flygon. So right off the bat, I'm recognizing that Galvantula is going to have a lot of play against his team. But I anticipated that he would lead his Flygon, um, as that is the hardest counter to my Galvantula. So I actually led Driftblim there. And now I'm able to get my Vigoroth on his Dugong, which is pretty good for me. Unfortunately, I'm not able to get to that Body Slam before the Dugong is able to get to that first Icy Wind. And it does uh, drop my attack, which is not ideal. I am down a shield here, but that's totally okay. I know that there's still a Flygon in the back. And I didn't want to bring my... Galvantula onto this because I, I figured that whatever else he has in the back might also be weak to Galvantula and I doubt that he would run Flygon and Whiskash in the same line. So now I'm going to bring out my Galvantula and get some nice farm off of this Dugong. He switches out there into his Medicham because he recognized that he was going to get farmed down before he was able to get to another Icy Wind. So I'm going to throw that Lunge. And then I'm going to switch into my own Drift Limb and go for an Icy Wind here. Debatable play because this isn't going to be able to take out the Metacham. And I knew that he wasn't going to shield it anyways. But this just guarantees that whatever attack I get hit um, with from the Metacham, I'm still going to be able to farm down the Metacham with Hex. Out comes the Dugong. This Icy Wind is really going to hurt. And I know that he still has Flygon. So I have to shield this up. Over farming a little bit here, and I'm actually able to hex it all the way down before he gets to another Icy Wind, so that's really good for me. Out comes the Flygon. These Icy Winds are going to hit for double super effective because of the Dragon and Ground typing. And I'm able to get another one off here. These Mud Shots are essentially doing nothing. Dragon Claw would probably take me out of that range, but I'm not going to let him farm up more energy. And I'm going to throw this Lunge, and this will be just enough to take out the Flygon there. I know that Galvantula has a lot of very favorable matchups against this team, so I'm actually going to lead Cresselia now, and then I have Vigoroth and Galvantula in the back. So um, he leads Flygon again. I'm totally fine with this because my Galvantula gets to avoid it. And Moonblast is going to hit for super effective because of Flygon's dragon typing. So he shields that up. Now, I don't know what his secondary move on Flygon is yet. It could be Earth Power. It's actually Earthquake, which does so much damage. I knew that this would just be a Dragon Claw, so I let it go through. I'm anticipating him swapping at any moment here, uh, but he's actually staying in. So I'm going to let this Dragon Claw go through as well and just sack the Cresselia. Now I'm going to bring out Vigoroth. I definitely could have committed a shield there to guarantee that I would have gotten to a uh, Moonblast, but that's okay. Down goes the Flygon, and he also brought Whiskash in this line, so two very hard checks to Galvantula, but luckily Galvantula gets to avoid both of them. So I have to stay in here and just play this out. 
If this is a blizzard, I really need to shield it up, but it's most likely just gonna be a mud bomb. But I need to keep this Vigoroth healthy, and then whatever is in the back, Galvantula is gonna have a favorable matchup against. It's the Dugong. I was as fast as I could be on this swap, and this Dugong is still barely gonna be able to get to this Icy Wind before I can throw this first attack. I will shield this up. And then throw this Discharge, because it will hit for super effective damage. He shields it up, and I believe this Dugong is barely able to get to this Icy Wind right before I'm able to get to a Discharge again, which is not great, but I should barely survive this Icy Wind. And then a um, little bit of lag there, but I'm going to throw... Oh, actually, no, I intentionally let him uh, farm a little bit more. So that way, if the, the Whisk Cash came in, it wouldn't be able to get as much farm, and this is going to allow me to take out the Whisk Cash. Uh, this isn't a Blizzard. And one more counter will do the trick there. Very good game. So we're going into game three. I really like this Drift Blim lead. Really the only thing I'm worried about is uh, the Dugong. Everything else is a somewhat neutral matchup. Like this Registeel matchup, I'm totally okay with. I like to go straight Shadow Ball on the first move here because Registeel is very bulky and opponents tend to not shield the first move. I can tank a Flash Cannon just fine because the lock-ons are essentially doing like almost no damage and Drift Limb has a lot of HP, so you really can't lock on farm down to Drift Limb. The Shadow Ball connects, that's really good for me. I know the Registeel is going to outpace me to this next charge move though. So I will shield this up and then over farm a little bit. Now I'm going to throw the Shadow Ball here. I'm anticipating that he's going to shield this. But I am worried that there might be a Flygon in the back. We'll have to see. Or the Whisk Cash. But I'm able to get to this uh, second Shadow Ball before he can get to um, a Flash Cannon. And I don't want to be farmed down by the Dugong. So I switch in my Vigoroth right away. Vigoroth is a very safe swap. Um, pretty much the worst thing that I would see against this team would be the Metacham. But even then, I'm going to be able to hit for some neutral damage with Body Slam. So I'm going to let this Icy Wind go through. It is a Flygon in the back, so I'm really glad that I preserved that Drift Limb. If I can land an Icy Wind on this thing, it's going to be great. But these Body Slams are really chunking the Flygon, even with Vigoroth's dropped attack here. Dragon Claw doesn't even take me out, and then I'm able to get off another Body Slam, which is really good. Get the shield. I bring in my Drift Limb again. I want to force him to throw energy. Just, uh, it is a Dragon Claw, and it is enough to take me out, so that's a nice play. Could have possibly shielded there, but I'm going to bring out my Cresselia now. It's going to be very hard to Psycho Cut down this Flygon, but I think that I have to commit to that play. So I do shield this up, and it is the big Earthquake, so really nice shield there. And I'm barely able to Psycho Cut farm that thing down. The Dugong in the back, I'm just going for Future Side here because it gets stab damage. It hits for more damage. And it's able to take out that Dugong. Very good games there, Arrow. So my next opponent is Lemon Lime, another really solid battler, running Tropius, Altaria, Bastiodon, Machamp, Stunfisk, and Granbull. So kind of a double flyer, and then he has Bastiodon. Um, so really, my uh, Galvantula just needs to avoid um, the Bastiodon and the Stunfisk. And my Cresselia has a lot of neutral matchups across the board other than the Bastion. That's probably the, the only thing that really hard counters the Cresselia, so I felt like Cresselia was the safest lead here. I doubt that this first move is going to get shielded, so I'm going to go straight for the Future Sight. You can see it does about half health there. From here, I can safely go for the Moonblast, most likely. These Discharges are adding up, and obviously Stunfisk outpaces Cresselia pretty cleanly but I do want to get rid of this Stunfisk here. I'm gonna let this go. I still tank it, but he's gonna to get to another move very quickly there. I bring out Ludicolo, I'm able to farm it down, which is good for me. Out comes the Shadow Machamp. This is not good at all because uh, Ludicolo is just gonna get outpaced here. I'm very curious as to what is in the back. Mm, debatable on whether or not I should shield this because I'm going to get farmed down regardless. I'm able to get to this energy ball. 
Really good counting by him. I will shield this up to force the last shield off the Machamp, and then my switch clock should be up. So I'm going to switch into Cresselia here, and it's a Bastiodon in the back. Really bad for me. Gonna get farmed. I do have my Stun Fisk in the back. So I led Cresselia, and then I had Ludicolo and Stun Fisk. So um, Ludicolo can somewhat handle Bastiodon, and um, Stun Fisk obviously handles Bastiodon. What I have to do here, I have to be very fancy with my energy management. I have to undercharge this Earthquake which I don't do. <laughs> I, I didn't undercharge it enough because I needed energy to threaten this Machamp. So I totally threw this game. It was definitely winnable, but I had to be fancy with energy management on the Bastidon. It was very, very close, very close for this game. So I'm gonna try the same team because I, I should have won that, but I made a, a really big misplay there. So essentially Ludicolo is the safe swap in this line. This is a decent lead here. We're going to see if it's Razor Leaf or Air Slash Tropius. It is Air Slash, so that's a lot worse for my Ludicolo. Again, I'm just going to go straight for the future side here. Tropius is bulky. There's no reason that they would shield this first move. So as long as I can get the Tropius out of here, Ludicolo should have some decent matchups in the back. But I'm anticipating that he brought the Machamp again. Kind of a kind of a dumb move on my part here, switching in the Ludicolo right now. Because this Tropius, he's staying in with the Tropius. Um, and I'm anticipating that there's the Bastidon in the back again. And so if I don't have Switch, which I'm not going to, uh, this is essentially game over. Should have stayed in with Cresselia and just played that out, try to get some more shields. Because now I'm going to bring out Stunfisk. Um, so really bad play on my part. I needed to at least get the Tropius a little bit lower before I tried to make that maneuver there with Ludicolo. It's just a really bad play. This Tropius is still just putting in so much work right now. Really not good. This Rock Slide's going to be able to take it out, but this is just like misplay all over the place. Not looking good. Because there's the Machamp, and there's the Bastidon. Very solid, hard counters. This would have been uh, a completely different game. <laughs> and then at, the, at this point, I just know that it's over. So I'm just uh, letting this happen, letting it happen. Because that was, that was terrible opening play on my part. Should have just stayed in. I knew that there was going to be Bastidon and Machamp in the back. And so I needed to have that alignment, but I did not. So I'm going to go with a Drift Blimb lead and just see what happens. Obviously, Bastiodon would be the worst thing that I could see. Everything else, I have some play there. Okay, this Machamp lead is actually kind of scary because the Rock Slide is going to hit for so much damage. And Vigoroth does not want to see Machamp either. So obviously, you need to shield this. I'm building up to the Shadow Ball. But I'm definitely going to just be throwing Icy Winds here. Machamp is pretty glassy, especially Shadow Machamp. It's not enough to take it out. Really nice no shield on his part. And then I'm able to get my Vigoroth on this Bastidon, which is really good for me. I can tank whatever this is. And then keep farming, keep farming. And I doubt that he's going to commit a shield here. Um, so I actually want to throw Body Slam to be able to farm him down some more before he gets to another move. That's what I'm hoping I'm going to be able to do. But I chicken out and throw another body slam. He's not going to shield this, but this leaves my Vigoroth with minimal health to be farmed, and I still have a body slam stored, so that was pretty good for me. And I get to see that it's a Tropius in the back. Uh, this is not over yet. Uh, Driftblim has to do double duty here, essentially. And Ludicolo is going to have to try to chip down the Machamp. No point in shielding this. I'm expecting the Machamp to come at any moment, so I'm over farming here a little bit. Worried that he's going to try to catch on the Machamp, but I'm able to throw another Icy Wind here. I'm expecting the swap at any moment. This Tropius still has a good amount of residual energy. I shield that the Leaf Blade feels bad. 
and I'm able to get this Icy Wind off. This should be enough to take out the Tropius. Machamp can't really farm down Driftlim. It's going to have to commit energy. Um, but I just, I switched into Ludicolo there anyways to bubble it down. So, uh, I lost that set, but I was able to take off a game. Good games here, Lemon Live. This is up against Linden Ryo, Ryu, Linden Ryu. I am probably mispronouncing the last name there, but he's running Skarmory, Umbreon, Toxicroak, Whiskash, Alolan, Sandslash, and Rainy Cast form. So, yet again, another team where Galvantula can really go to town as long as it avoids the Whiskash. All those other matchups are fairly neutral or positive for Galvantula. So I'm going to shield up this Ice Punch. He won the lead very hard with that um, Alolan Sand Slash against my Skarmory. That's really not good. Or Alolan Sand Slash against my Drift Blim. So I'm going to throw a lunge on this Toxic Croak. It is double resisted. Huge no shield on his part. Huge no shield. Should have just went for the discharge. But luckily, Driftblim is an absolute wall to this thing, and I dropped its attack, so I'm fully committed to the farm down here. And even though I'm weak to Alolan Sand Slash's moves, I can hit back for neutral damage with this uh, Ghost-type damage here. I'm anticipating the um, Sand Slash to come back out, and there it is. I'm actually going to bait with Icy Wind here. It's double resisted, but I still get a shield, which is really good for me. I'm gonna throw another Icy Wind. Again, it's still double resisted, but I get the second shield. So I'm really curious as to what is in the back. I will shield up this Ice Punch, and now I'm gonna switch into my Stun Fisk. And he's staying in. This is probably a Bulldoze, but he's been double debuffed, so it's not that scary. And in the back is Skarmory. So uh, my Stun Fisk has a lot of play, which is really great. It was able to avoid the Toxic Croak completely, and that allowed it to have play against this back line. So we know how this goes. Uh, I am worried about a Brave Bird, obviously, but these uh, Rock Slides are really adding up, and I'm continuing to over farm to try to throw them off on my energy there. I land the Rock Slide, and then I'm able to land another Rock Slide before the Skarmory has thrown a move. This Skarmory has so much energy, but it's going to go down, and then I'm going to be able to uh, essentially mud shot down this Sand Slash. Good first game. I'm going to use this Drift Blim lead again. Really, um, like, Umbreon lead would be bad, and um, the Alola Sand Slash lead would be bad, but Whiskash is totally fine. This is kind of a, a sketchy matchup here. Obviously, if the Whiskash lands the Blizzard, uh, it's going to one-shot me. So it's a, a very baity matchup. So I think I make a huge call here, and I no-shield this. It was just a Mud Bomb, so really good call on my part. Now I'm going to throw this Icy Wind, which should be just enough to take out this Whiskash. It is. That's great. Out comes Skarmory. Uh, this is still totally fine with me, but I'm wondering if there is a Toxic Croak in the back. I'm landing so many Shadow Balls unshielded, which is really good for me. I'm just going to let this go. It probably doesn't take me out, and now I'm going to... Okay, I'm actually going to be able to get this last second Icy Wind, which is good. And if it is a Toxic Croak in the back, I want to... In okay, I'm actually going to bring out the Vigoroth here to bait out the Toxic Croak. Questionable play. Um, because honestly, mm, well, this this makes sense because um, essentially Galvantula would have to pull double duty if it was a Toxic Croak anyway. So I baited it out and I'm just doing as much chip damage as possible. But a double shielded Galvantula is just going to sweep. And luckily he throws his energy here as well. I wasn't going to be able to get to that body slam, I don't think. So thank goodness he threw energy i bring out drift blim here that was a bad play i even got countered down which is terrible and i don't get a volt switch through here so i have to shield this up and i'm able to take out the toxic croak and it's the skarmory in the back again and galvantula is for sure going to be able to handle this just in case it's a brave bird i'll shield it up and it is so that's a good shield and i'm able to volt switch it down good game there galvantula is putting in so much work against his team I'm going to lead. I'm just going to do this line again. Vigoroth makes for a very solid safe swap, and typically it would bait out the Toxicroak. 
All right, we see the Sand Slash again, which is not great for me. I'm gonna use Galvantula actually as a safe swap because technically Vigoroth is my hard counter to this thing. The fact that he's staying in here uh, makes me think that there's no Whisk Cash in the back. So obviously the Ice Punch is gonna hurt. Could have possibly shielded that up. Um, now he brings out Toxic Croak onto the Galvantula. I'm gonna go for the Lunge again. I don't know about this. Because it doesn't get shielded again. But the nice thing is that this offers a lot of farm for my Drift Limb. So my thought process was is I can at least debuff the attack and then fully commit to the farm down on this Toxic Croak and have so much energy to be able to thread in that uh, Alolan Sand Slash. And I know that it um, doesn't have a move stored because it threw that Ice Punch. But this is really hurting here. I'm fully committed. Fully committed here. I felt like this was just going to be a Mud Bomb. So I let it go. It is just a Mud Bomb. And I have 100 energy. I'm anticipating the Sand Slash to come back in. It is. I'm not going to bait this time. I'm going to go for Shadow Ball. Um, and it doesn't get shielded. So really good for me. Now I'm going to be able to go for this Icy Wind on the Skarmory. And then Double Shielded Vigoroth should be able to just counter this thing down. I do outpace um, the Skarmory to the charge moves pretty easily. But at this point, I, I have so much energy, might as well start throwing some body slams. But saving bull shields for Vigoroth here um, after the Toxic Croak came out um, definitely was my win scenario there. I'll shield up whatever this is. And again, I'm going to be able to take this out. Because I just have so much energy. Vigoroth can beat Skarmory in the two shields just because of how quick it is getting to those moves. But other than that, uh, Skarmory is a pretty decent response to Vigoroth because it resists those body slams. Able to counter it down there. Good game, Linden. All right, uh, my final opponent for this week is Speediest Chief. Um, running Defense Deoxys, Umbreon, Toxicroak, Regirock, um, Frostlass, and Mantine. And so, again, Galvantula is going to have so much play against this team. Technically speaking, like, Regirock is like the best response to my Galvantula. So I anticipated that he would lead it. And so I led my um, Cresselia is just kind of a safe neutral lead against his team. Um, Umbreon is scary and Frostlass is a little bit scary there. But I'm going to shield up this Avalanche. I really want to be able to farm down this Frostlass. And I'm able to do it before he gets to a second move. So that's really good for me. Um, out comes the Reggie Rock again. These discharges are going to hit for neutral damage. Reggie Rock, unlike Regis Steel, does not have that nice steel type defensive resistances. So this uh, discharge is going to hit for a lot of damage. I get a shield there. This Galvantula is putting in so much work. And so I'm actually going to preserve this Galvantula because I'm anticipating whatever's in the back is also somewhat weak to this. So I'm going to throw a discharge here. And then down goes the Reggie Rock. And it's a Toxic Croak in the back. So I'm just going to go for the Discharge again. Maybe should have Lunge Baited here. But I felt like he would have uh, predicted that. He actually does shield it up. And now I'm going to bring in my Cresselia. And I'm just barely going to be able to get to this Moon Blast in time. I know this is a Sludge Bomb. But Cresselia barely survives it. It's very tanky. Gonna throw the Moon Blast. This hits for neutral on Toxic Croak because of the poison and fighting typing. And I'm able to take that first game. Good game. Cresselia, Galvantula, and Stunfisk. Let's see how it goes. The worst thing I could see in the lead, again, would be an Umbreon or a Frostlass. But Galvantula safe swap. Uh, nothing, nothing on his team can shut that down. So Reggie Rock in the lead. I'm totally fine with this again because technically speaking, this is his best response to Galvantula. So fine with staying in here and playing it out. I know that he's consistently over farming there. He should be able to get to the Stone Edge uh, definitely sooner than I can get to my charge moves here. I land the Future Sight, which might have been a little overkill because I need two moves to KO this thing anyway. So maybe double Moonblast is the play here, but 
I'm going to uh, switch into my Stunfisk because I wanted a nice farm down there. Um, and then he also simultaneously swapped into Defense Deoxys there, which is kind of crazy. Luckily, um, Defense Deoxys' charge moves, they all do like nothing to Stunfisk, but the counters do add up. So all I want to do here is just burn shields and then save both shields for my Galvantula, and it should be a pretty clean sweep in the back. So that Earthquake lands, which is really good for me. If I can get to a Rock Slide, that's gonna be amazing. I should barely be able to get there. Just a sliver left. Wondering if he's gonna let this go and then lock on with Reggie Rock. Actually brings out Frostlast to get a jump start on energy. This is a little scary. So I'm going to bring in Cresselia so I can get to this move. And then I'm most likely gonna switch in Galvantula to avoid being powder snowed down. Um, oh man, okay. And then I saw that he made the swap onto Regirock, but that Frostlass is so loaded, I think he was recognizing that he wasn't gonna be able to powder snow down my Cresselia. I think I need to fully farm this down. I'm able to do it, and then I just need to throw Discharge on the Frostlass here, and that should be able to take it out. Uh, so I'm I'm obviously recognizing that uh, his team can't handle like a Galvantula safe swap or a double shielded Galvantula. And so I'm just trying to exploit this as much as possible. Able to get to this discharge here, but I also had a move stored on my Cresselia still. So pretty favorable scenario there. Good game. Going into game three, I love the Cresselia lead. It's so safe. And I'm gonna put the Stunfisk in the back. I still haven't seen uh, the Umbreon come out at all. He leads Mantine. Mantine is a very interesting Pokemon to play against. It just constantly debuffs you over and over and over and over again. These Bubble Beams like do hardly anything. I'm just gonna go for the heavy hitting Future Sight right off the bat. So this, these are really long, drawn-out matchups against Mantine because of these debuffs. Goes for the heavy hitting move of Ice Beam. That is definitely the correct way to play it. But he's dangerously close to being in range of Future Sight knocking him out. So he actually shields that up. And I'm just trying to get a shield advantage here and let Galvantula sweep the back line again. So Bubble Beam doesn't even take me out. And uh, this is another bubble beam. As tempting as it is to shield this, I just want the shield advantage with Galvantula and to be able to farm down this Mantine. So he switches into Frostlast to avoid being farmed. Smart play. But I'm gonna be able to get my Stunfisk on the Frostlast. And commit no shields. Again, I'm gonna try to save both shields for Galvantula and see what happens. <clears throat> Over farming a little bit. Now I'm gonna throw the rock slide. And it takes it out. There's the Mantine again. I'm able to get to this rock slide because I over farmed on the frost last, so good uh, position for me. And he shields that up. So I'm really curious as to what is in the back. Probably the Reggie Rock, I would assume. And so Galvan, yeah, it is Reggie Rock and Galvantula is gonna be able to sweep this. Let me know what you think of this format. I really, uh, honestly, draft battles are my favorite form of PVP because you never have to run into like a mirror match pretty much and the, the matchups are always unique and, and the team building is super fun. So um, I will be bringing one video of this each week um, and make sure you check out Arrow's channel. He actually streams and shout casts some of these matches um, on Sundays. Uh, you can also follow him on Twitter to check out those times. But thank you all so much for watching. Uh, let me know if you enjoy this different content. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you all in the next video.